Okay, so what we have here is a Dell uh, Inspiron 6000. And what happens with these is they have your standard Foxconn jack. With that being said, that's a uh, round, then center pin configuration on this jack. Pretty common for Dell machines. Even the newer systems have them. But what we're looking at is this machine was brought to us and it would not power on. Would not charge the battery, would not turn on period, no matter what you did. Um, we checked the battery, the battery was still uh, good. Uh, checked the jack for ohming it out, the jack was perfectly fine. But what we're finding, as with many of these machines, it was a atypical situation with your previous uh, C600s and some of the 5150s and 5100s and 1150s uh, you would have stress fractures here now this camera right here cannot get as detailed a picture but I can tell you under close observation uh, with this loop you're gonna get uh, stress fractures that you can see the develop across here that's actual cracking of the board but that doesn't seem to be the largest issue largest issue with this is the actual uh, inductor here so these actually acted as fuses so instead of putting fuses like on the Toshiba's they put inductors here for the power cores and they actually acted as fuses very common thing is that these inductors crack from the board. So we have a crack here, hairline fracture. Have to resolder that. And that happens due to the jack working its way out. So this jack is actually, if you have the board sitting here facing forward in a straight line, you can actually see that the jack should have been straight here but it's crooked so what's happened is it tilted this way and hit and flexed the inductor and caused issues so what we'll do is uh, test this jack here in a second we'll show how you can test it make sure everything's good with a continuity tester and then we'll go from there so now we have our continuity tester hooked up you have to ground it to the board so we have it grounded here, we have power coming in, and we know it's good because we can test the jack right there, and we get the light to turn on. So, if the light turns on here, we know that the power is good across the board, or at least coming into the jack. Now we can take this and try to hook it up to, say, the one over here by the power cycle and we get nothing uh, we don't get a single thing but we can try to test this and we get it here but you know this right here because we're pushing down on it we're actually getting it to start here but you don't get it past there nothing so we know that the solder is what has caused our actual failure because we can place this at the bottom part of the inductor where the separation is and we get nothing but you can put it on the top side see we just lay it on top of the inductor and roll it across we know that it goes across the inductor so the inductor is nothing more than a coil that operates at a certain frequency yada yada that's a roundabout way of saying that they can use this as a fuse so, we're having this light up as it goes across the inductor, and we know that that's the bad part, and that's what we have tested and found. So now we're going to solder it and go from there. So now we have our board here, and you um, can't really tell, but uh, we soldered both sides of that inductor back in. And we have it hooked up to power, so let's just see what happens. Let's see if it turns on. Uh, got it powered on, and 
will push the thing up. Oh, there goes those green lights. Um, in the series, one, two, three, like that. Turn it on, they turn off. But we got a green light over there. We got a green light on the board here. Just for test purposes, that means it works. So we'll say it's done. So to fix that, we just hooked up that in inductor and fixed it. Uh, as a precautionary measure, we actually soldered the jack back in and made sure everything was good. And we're good to go. We'll put this back together and call it fixed.